once again, I'm standing here in um, the gate of the power bishop, and uh, we're back in here uh, this next Sunday, so we will share it next Sunday. Now our theme for today is Resurrection Builds Security. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ builds security. When you say security, let us say that we are talking about being peaceful and uh, like if everything is taken care of and we need to really have that rest, you know, rest because everything is under control. But in our lives, we cannot see that everything is like we can have rest or truly found security. Maybe we think, maybe those uh, powerful people, those uh, uh, millionaires, they have, maybe they have security. We think it in the way of finances. Like in a poor person that have only peace, maybe if have have money on these things, be secure and be peaceful. But the same as other people, maybe the rich or powerful people, maybe they, maybe they have not need much of money, they not need some possession or, or position. But the other things have such insecurity also. Like maybe uh, insecurity in their uh, in their work, maybe in their business, maybe there's a competition there. Or maybe insecurity in the base on on family. Maybe how rich you are, how powerful, but there's something wrong in the relationship. Or maybe insecurity in their health. So truly, we cannot have such kind that how we think and how we say everything around us is like smooth and everything is like taken care of that surely you could have rest this is something like our security is in our faith in our lord jesus christ that's the bottom line when we say resurrection builds security because our god has risen and he is alive then we are secure Believing that he is alive, our faith is alive, our hope is alive, and with God, so our faith is able to uh, supply our needs. So our faith in Christ, we believe and secure that he will uh, heal us our diseases. We have forgiveness of sins, and we have life eternal in him. So we build our security in our faith in our risen Lord. Not maybe because we have a good salary, a good position. It may be around us is like peaceful. No. There's always a threat in our security. There's always. Because that's the work of the enemy. It always threat your security because that is his work that is his job description of the enemy so for us we get to put our trust in our lord and that's where our security is because all these things other things is moving anything is movable except our god Except our God. So nothing in this earth is called uh, permanent except our God. Everything is movable. Everything. Even anyone is dispensable. That's why we have to build our security in our Lord Jesus Christ. Our identity, our hope, our peace. Everything is in God. Because if not, we we'll always be safe. We we'll always be insecure. And if we are insecure in any way, we we'll always give problem to you and to others. 
because her insecurity will also affect others. That's the problem in the family, problem in the church, problem in the government, in the world. Mostly based because somebody is insecure. And when you're insecure, you always think much of yourself. You situate first yourself. And you think first of yourself, it's always a problem. It's always a problem. But there are securities of God. Lord, the Lord of peace us. Not think much of ourselves, only but to think of others. To think of God. So here tonight, this morning, the Lord will share to us that to put our trust in Him. And that is where really our security. And here in John chapter 10, it talks about the whole from verse 1 up to verse 17 to 18. It talks about the shepherd. It talks about what the Lord is doing unto us. Be a true shepherd and a good shepherd. And to be secure is like uh, an allegory where he used the sheep and the shepherd. As we Filipinos, we are not much used about the sheep, Carnero. We mostly that these animals can be seen only in Middle East and Europe. So as here, we have our pigs, we have our chickens, we have our cows and caravans. But in Middle East, especially Middle East, or at least in Muslim, uh, in Europe, or partly uh, Europe, where it's near the Middle East. To be a shepherd is part of being a business. Your, your, or the nature of your business is taking care of those sheep. And not only for selling, for food, but also that, uh, that made, uh, you know, medium sheep, all those, uh, that, that, that your coat that they're doing. As part of business. And in all testament, most of the people like this, and they're very rich people. Shepherd. But to us, when we say shepherd, no? Manong pakiro. Then no manong pakiro. Mostly, these people are hired people. The owner of the cow or the carabao will hire somebody to let the carabao eat somewhere. But in Middle East, the shepherd is the one really there. Take care, care of the sheep. And the Old Testament, they are rich people. And here, we could see the, the parable or a, a contrast between this, between the shepherd and the sheep. And also us being as the sheep of God being the people of God. And here, you could see that in the first verse, Moshe I say to you, he does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, at the same in the feet and a rubber. But he who enters the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So he's talking now about the sheep and the sheepfold. Sheepfold. But before this, he is also mainly talking about the shepherd, not only talking about leaders, but talking about these spiritual leaders of Jewish people, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, who has been given by God to lead these people or to care for the people of God. And here we could see that the Jewish people, <coughs> the Jewish people have not yet really taken care of by these religious leaders, by their shepherds. That's why he contrasts this thing. Because here the Jewish people are just walking, roaming around without a shepherd, truly shepherd. Because their shepherd, the Pharisees and Sadducees, and those religious leaders at that time, doesn't really care for them. They called rubber and fit with the Lord. Because they just trap people. They just get what they want. 
But here the Lord emphasizes that He, Jesus, our shepherd, He enters the door. Truly, because He's the owner of the door, He's a thief, He's a rapper. He entered to the door, and the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear His voice, and He calls His own sheep by name and leads them out. So here, the shepherd is known by his sheep. So it talks here about relationship. It talks about relationship. So first, to build security with our God is to build relationship with our God. We say relationship is not only talking that you know our God, but really you have time with them. And such relationship that you are not getting something from them, but you are really caring for them. That's something that the Lord is showing us here. Relationship builds security. Right relationship. Because we have a right relationship with God, we know our God. And He loves us so much. So it would be a very simple to understand. Let's talk about parents and children. As a youth director for many years, one thing I have found, you know, something won't irritate me, you know, as a, as a youth leader. Because they say, there are 40 or 60 young people. There are 40, 60 kind of attitude. Hmm? So I have to deal with it. Because maybe two, about the two, about this four to sixty, there are four or five that really, to me, I meet him, my ex. There's something, there's something about this guy. With this. So, I think, you know, this, this, this really, this really person, is very, 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 very funny. But here I came to know, as long as parents are pregnant, First, I said, what's really there? What's really about in their heart? In this thing? Because I came to understand that God or that young people who come to the church. So, what He is doing in their house, He will do it in the church. It meant to say that how He was brought up in their house, He also brought here in the church. Oh, so. With that kind of understanding, instead of everything, everything did. I came to pray, Lord, that something in this, in this guy, in this person. And I came to understand and to know their families. What the thing going on in their families? What is the, the rules? How they brought up? So that's came to know that mostly young people who are to say insecure because they're insecure in the family. They come to the church insecure and they bring the insecurity and affect also others. So here I said insecurity. So there's something going on in the family. Or I don't know how the parents will. Uh, care for it. So, but the battle I want to emphasize is that insecurity starts at home. How we have uh, really secured our children that they love, taking care of, and and being to understand what's going on around. So it starts from there. So the same also. When we have no right relationship with our God, we are insecure. Same also with these children. So, because we are not secure of ourselves, our relationship to God, we are also an, an insecure parents. And that is it. we as an insecure parent will also communicate that to children. And these children also see, understand, and caught our insecurity, and then also become insecure of themselves. So, pasa, pasa. so the first thing I said is to build a security to God, that God loves us, that 
God loves us. He cares for us. With the kind of concept of understanding, he learns us to love our children and others. So here, in order to build security relationships, that's something that we have to, I uh, would say, invest in. Relationship. Relationship. Because as times go by, as times go by, we cannot really uh, revive those times that pass. What we have now is today. The time today. Yesterday, is no longer in our hands. What we have is the experience. The good and the bad. And the lesson from it. What we have is today. Tomorrow is just coming. What we do is today. So make the best of today in building relationship. Uh, I studied here in Calibo from, from high school to college. In some college, I'm going to a job in the Vietnam. I sit in at home after grade, grade six. And now when I'm married, I'm used that away and away from my parents. And now as I see my parents are really old, my mother is having us out of So he didn't recognize me no more. I said, Cyril, no, no. Ah, uh, that. Uh, so, before that, I came to my mind that they're, they're going home and going home. I have to pass those vacant time that I had without them. So I always came home. To the and I said, uh, the best thing that we could do the best to help them, pray for them. And I said, we have to, before you become 80, you can have a birthday celebration with my mother. And yet it is. Before, um, eight years old, we uh, made a birthday celebration for her. And we can make it that Alzheimer, Alzheimer, all this nonsense. He said, let's wait 85. No, don't wait 85. Let's start 80 now. Because he's 85 last year. And he got Alzheimer in 1982. So what's the use of all the celebration? Because he didn't know us. Hmm? He forgot us, except my father. And where he came from, from back. That's all of us he remembers. So time is running. And I cannot only go back to the time that passed. What I have now is now. So I have to build a relationship now. I said that I have to build a relationship now with them to pass out those things before they die. Because sometimes most of the things we all regret all those things. Why, why? We have not done those things. We have all this half the time, but we just do we use the time. Time is now. So build relationship now with God and with our families and with others. So that we can have true security. So build relationship prayer to God. Then here. To hear the doorkeepers open the doors and hear your voice and call his own sheep. And by name he leads him out. And he brings out his own sheep. He goes before them. And see the sheep knock and follows him, for they know his voice. So we build relationship with God now, not only for uh, security, but to know He is God. He said He leads us. He makes us lie on green pastures and leads us beside the still waters. That is our baptism. He restores my soul. And listen in part of what Jesus' name say, forgiveness. Yet though I walk to the bottom shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You run in your stuff, be comfort me. The protection and preservation of God. How we will receive 
the protection and preservation of God, first of all, by the teachings of God. Being protected to know the truth, to not be a scam as well. Also by the prayers of our God and the prayers of, our, of others, to be protected. So here in the church, we get first the security of God. Security that will not be moved. Some people put the security in their money, in their possession, or wherever else. That is moving. They think everything is controlled by their hands. I tell you, every time I pray for a dying person, I see his hand like this. Or like that. It means to say, he has nothing more to do. Sometimes our young, it is, everything is under control by hands. But I tell you, time will come, your hands will just be folded. <laughs> that means you're dead. Nothing. You don't control anything. God controls everything. That's why we have to put our trust in Him. Not in other things. Because all those things are flitting, the Bible says. It just flies like a bird. We have to put our trust in Him and other things will follow. So here, it gives us that, that concept that He leads us. We have to follow. He's a shepherd of our soul. The shepherd of our soul. He's our God. And to be a shepherd, advocating for being God, it stands being God a shepherd is express that through us, like fathers. We are shepherd our families. The Lord has given us sheep, our children. So become the co-shepherd of God to care. In the church with the priest to care for the people, with the shepherd's heart, to care for them. You know, nobody likes that the meaning of shepherd in Greek is pastor. Pastor. He cares for things that will care for people. And sometimes it's, sometimes nobody likes to be pastor. Or nobody likes uh, to, to be a priest, to be a priest. Because sometimes they cannot marry. We're not church, they marry. But still, they want to be priest or pastor. Because others say there's no money in there. Not much of, 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 of uh, income. But one thing, before I become a priest, I read one of book of St. Gregory. He said, to be a priest or a shepherd of God is the highest, the highest, the highest vocation in the world. In the world. It's higher than the king. Because the king will only provide food, shelter to its people. But a shepherd, a bishop, Priest does not only provide, but above all, it provides and consoles the soul. The soul of man is very important to God. And that's something that we have to be accountable to God. Your soul, your mind is with you, your position is with you. Are we not accountable to God? But your soul, we are accountable to God. And that's something that it ends eternal. Some people, some job will end your work, will, will end your duty after eight hours, eight to five. That's it. I'm out. I'm out. No better. But a priest or a shepherd, you are working 24-7. 24-7. Their work about the papers, 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 hmm, that's it. But a work in the church of priest or of shepherd, not about the papers only, 
What does I want the problem of every people? And that's something you have to face. The problem of the people. Because through us, through the word of God, through the spirit, through the counseling, you could help them to their problem. There's no jobs like that. Eight to five in the garden. Just go there and find all these things at eight, five o'clock. That's it. Eight o'clock, no more. But as us, Sindhu said, when the first time, you're always available to the soul of this people. And that's something that being a shepherd, not only intended for their food, shelter, or their drinks, or their uh, what they have in life, but above all, their soul. And that's something that it takes about a lifetime and eternity. And here he said, you have to follow him. That's our job, that's us to follow our shepherd. But see, this chapter 10, he talked much about, not only about, he talked about a little about shepherd here. Because at the first seven, this is a sudden change of topic. They said, I am the door of the sheep. In verse 11, that's, I am the good shepherd. That is how they talk about being a shepherd most. But here it talks slightly about the shepherd, but it talks about the door. That's the second part now of us being a shepherd as the door. He said here, verse 7, Moses should I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. And whoever ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear him. He's talking about the Pharisees and Sadducees. Before me, before other shepherds, before me shepherds, are there thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear him. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy, but I have to give, to give them life that may have it more abundantly. I am the door. So there's something about a figure of speech. Why he is the door of the sea? So literally you say door. So you, you, you literally think about it, you cannot comprehend, but I am the door of the sea. He's talking about the Middle Eastern shepherd. The Middle Eastern shepherd before, when they get all the sheep inside the sea port, Olungan, because there's only one small door for the sheep to come. And every sheep comes in, first, the shepherd is on the door. He is looking at everyone. He's always standing at the door. And as the sheep goes in, goes in, goes in, goes in, goes in, goes in, goes in because he could see if there's lacking one. That's why he stands on the door. Let every sheep come out. He is the last man to get in. So he's then standing in the door. And we'll see or count for 100, 200, or 200, 199. No. Hmm. When, when is locking. So he is in the door. So that every, every sheep would come in, come in. He could see if there's someone is lacking, or someone is not there, or someone is in an injured one, he could see. Because there's only one ship would pass at a time. So they could see if there's some uh, one ship had been injured by the wolf, whatever. So they could see. They're always at the door. So here it talks that our God is always watching us. He is concerned of you and me. And if there's a problem, he knows it. That's why when we pray, God knows it. Because he sees us. He's always standing at the door. Every sheep would come in. Before we pray, he knows already that we are in problem. He knows it. And the good thing about the shepherd, he just going to say, ah, oh, there's something wrong. He do something about it. No? Like us fathers, we know if we really know your children, 
You know and you know. Come in the prayer at the lagoon. You will know them. If we have built relationship with our with our children, you will know them. No? You will know them if they have done something bad. You know? They become instant very good. Ah. They're very bad too. They used to do things they're not doing to do. They cleaned the house, there was the place, oh. Voila. In Malaka. There's something wrong. So, you will know them. Or something they just so very quiet. You will know. But we as a father, as God, we say, God knows the really Sulipan. That's really good to know. Because he cares. So also the father. We will only take a look. Where was the problem? You always first to know and and see to it what's the problem. You're the first to ask what's the problem. Because we know there's something wrong. How I how I I, I, I got the same in this thing. This was the most problem of the OFW people. I've been OFW for many years. And that's the problem most. I've been in the seat for more than, more than 10 years. And mostly of my companions, the sailors and seamen, they got everything to the children. They got the prison pay, they, they are the cats, get all the but there's always something like the presence there. If there's something wrong, they're gonna do something about it. Thank God for this new uh, this communication right now. That with that with a touch bottom, you could really communicate with your with your family. Unlike in our time. There's no such things like that. We have to depend on letters. Letters that our Christmas card will be in Valentine's Day. Our Valentine's card already in summer. See, oh, for emergency reason, we could talk, we could contact the company. And that's mostly the predicament of every OFW father. They can say something about master the father. Yes, they could be a good provider. But other things they're not. They're not. I got I got one companion. His daughter is going to get married. And he's part of my Bible study and so And with that I will tell the family. I will go home early. Maybe you know, the wedding is say uh, uh, uh let's say June. So he didn't finish his contract. He go home April. Home. I said why? My daughter is getting married and I have no time much to her. I was that day when he was delivering. I was that day when he's getting in the school. I was there when he was waiting. I was that day when he was there. So, he did. So, he came back to the ship. How was the wedding? It's uh, very good. But one thing very good there is from April to June before my, my daughter is married and my wife I I asked I only asked one favor. One what's that? That he will sleep with us. His, his daughter is about to live twenty five. And that's the time we could sleep with him together in the bed. That's the only time I had not that much about her because I'm here always in the city. Very good today. This is what called a contract for eight months or six months. In our time, it's always 12, 13, 14 months. So that's what I asked. But to sleep with us, together with his mother in our bed because I have not really cared. And after that, that's it. 
you will be given to another man. So said, time is very, very important. Time is slipping away. So here, time always connects with relationship. Don't let the time pass. At the end, you just regret why I am not given much of this time. Why I am not given much of this relationship. So here, our God is always there, standing at the door, passing. Every day of our life, He sees us passing, go back and forth. He always sees us. That's our God. He's always there. He's there watching us, praying for us. He knows what is going on to us. And then, in the second, the door is that when every ship already come in, the shepherd would lie or sleep at the door. That small door, the, sh the shepherd would, would sleep at the door. The small little door. He will sleep there. So that before anything or any woman would come in, he would come first to the shepherd. Now you see, he said, I am the door. Because always there at the door, sleeping, when time to sleep, so that he would know when it comes, somebody will come in, or well, anyone, he will go first with the shepherd. Or oh, if it's a, a, a rubber a thief, we say over my dead body before it will get inside. He always there at the door. So I said, he, I am the door. Before anything would come in, he would come first to the shepherd. That he is the door. And God gives his son to be our shepherd. He not only lay down in the door, he gave his life to us. He laid his life unto us. So that through him as the door now, we could have salvation. We could have forgiveness of sin. We could have restoration. We could have everything because through our Lord. Jesus Christ. So first we have to build relationship with our shepherd because without him we are nothing. So to build security once again here is to build our relationship with our God. So it's very very simple when you put in our family as parents always there to lay down where the door of our children. And we as father, I tell you, we are also at the door. We are the door of blessing and curse in our families. As leaders, like presidents, they are the door of curse and blessing. How do we do that? How can happen? Through our decisions. If we make decisions out of God, we are letting curse come in in our families. In our nation, as leader. So being as a leader, we are the door. It comes to our decisions in life. What do you choose in life that would come into our family? And we also pray for our president. Because his decision would come in. Whatever he do, whatever he plan, decision would come in to us. A blessing or a curse. Whatever. So that's how being as a parent, as father, leader, important. Jesus always at the door to see to it that nothing bad would come to us. He was always there, watching, always there for us. So we, as sheep, our responsibility is to follow, to follow, to submit, to obey. Because mostly, if we do our own thing, that's where the problem is. We go astray. I have no sin. I have chicken at the back. And I know what I'm talking about. Because not only I have chicken, I have cats. And the cats are just waiting for the chicks. 
As long as the, the, the mother chicken is there, the cat will not come in. But as long as the mother chicken is here and there's one chick go around, that cat. Right, chicken is that one. Illustrations of family. Like children, you don't obey your parents, you are susceptible to the enemy. He's just waiting for you to make a bad step. One just bad step and you forget. So we have to obey. We have to obey God, submit to God, to follow Him, because He will lead us to good. He has a good plan for you and me. We have to obey, to submit, and have blessings. With that, we build a relationship. We build a security with him. A person that is love will always, always be secure. No matter. Because he knows and he knows that he is love. A person is love. So we have to know the love of God. To be secure with God's love. So that we know, no matter how Lord, we have to be persecuted. When you fail, you know there's forgiveness. You know why people sometimes do not forget? Because they don't know for them in experience that they didn't know they've been forgiven. Or they, they, don't, they, they don't know that they will be forgiven. That's why some children do not tell their parents about what they have done. They're not honest. Because they're so afraid that their parents would end it. Well, that's part of it. But one thing, even the end, still not. But we have to serve them. We have to love them, or part of it, like the discipline is necessary. But still because we love them. So here once again, it, it, it's an uh, growing to all of us to continue to grow in a relationship in a love of So it will be secure. It will be secure. That is the reason why every time we celebrate the feast of every uh, disciples or apostles, those martyrs that they gave their life to God, they're secure. They don't afraid to die. Give their life to God because they know and they know that God loves them. And the promise of eternal life is in them. So, also with the brothers and sisters, in order to get rid of the insecurity in our life that gives you problems, it gives hassles you, and it hassles others, let us develop our relationship to God to know love, to know that He cares. For us. That is because our God is alive. He is present. He is alive. Our faith is alive. Our hope is alive. And we know that He is alive. Christ is present. Christ is Hallelujah. Praise God.